streets are crowded with people escaping cities by car and on foot as witnesses report unexplained mass suicides. First recorded in Romania, there's now an alarming spread of incidents into Europe and Siberia. Estimated Aiden. death Yeah, no, look outside. All right, here we are in After Effects. This process is pretty simple. I'm gonna speed up some sections, um, just some tedious keyframing and, and mask moving, etc. But the gist is this. We're gonna replace an eyeball with another eyeball. So in order to do so, what I'm gonna do is I first need to create a null object, and then I'm gonna track the eye. So I'm gonna to go to track motion, drag the point to where I want. Now I'm going to be using the little glare from the window. Now this will cause a slight issue later on when his pupil actually, or when the eyeball moves, but the glare stays in the same position. We'll just add a keyframe um, of that position, it'll fix it. But what we're gonna do is track it until he blinks. That looks about good. And then we're gonna stop. Now hit U and you're gonna open up all the keyframes of what you just tracked. Now what we're gonna do is find out where he's going to blink. And then from there, we're gonna delete all the keyframes after he blinks because obviously we're trying to track the eyeball and if he's you know blinking that's kind of kind of hard um, given that this is a bird box demonstration i guess his eyes closed would be a good thing but whatever moving on so i'm going to drag to the position of where his eyes begin to open up again now given the fact that this is not like really crisp high def um, footage the window glare is a little blurry. So I'm going to track it frame by frame for a little bit until I get it to a, you know, a nice spot and then I'll shrink the track point box and then track the rest of the way really quickly, frame by frame. It doesn't take too long at all. A lot of times people get a little nervous about tracking, but demystifying it is, it's, you know, it's pretty simple. Once I'm done tracking, I'm gonna remove the last keyframe that I do not need edit the target to the null that I created, hit OK. We're gonna go to over to apply, make sure it's on X and Y and hit OK. Now you can notice that my null is right where the eye is, where I tracked it. Oh yeah, back and forth we go. And that's pretty much what I want. Quick and dirty, like it. So I'm gonna duplicate the footage because the eyeball is gonna go in between these clips. To actually create the mask, you can, you know, create a regular mask, but what I need to do is create a brand new layer, a new solid, and make it all black. And then from here, I'm gonna create a mask on the actual solid. This helps a lot, so I don't need to go keyframe by keyframe masking out the original footage. Um, it's just, this is an easier process for me. From here, I'm gonna add a little bit of, a little bit of feathering, maybe three, four pixels, just to give it a little bit of a feather there. That looks good. And then from here, all that's left to do is parent it to the null so it stays attached. Now again, when his pupil moves, you're going to see that the shape does not go with it. Again, we're tracking the glare and not the eye. So I'm just gonna create a quick keyframe, drag the timeout a little bit to where it shifts, drag the shape, not the mask path, the shape. And then we are good to go. Now I'm gonna speed up this footage right here because he's going to blink. And now from here, we're going to adjust the position of the actual mask path. We're not adjusting the shape, we are adjusting the path. If you adjust the shape, ooh, you're gonna have a heck of a time there. So all we need to do is just play around with the keyframing where he blinks, make sure it's closed, and then fast forward to where he opens it again and just make sure that that shape aligns to his eyeball. Again, this is just a quick and dirty demonstration. If you wanted it to look just perfect, you can actually take your time. Um, if I had to do it all over again, I probably would mask out the entire eyeball and not 
adjust the color and the pupil. Um, but hey, it worked for me. So I'm going to make sure everything is in position. Zoom out a few times just to make sure. And you can see on the left side and the top side of the eye, we have to make a slight adjustment to the actual shape of this mask. And that's simple. You just go back and adjust some points. And again, take your time. This is, <laughs> this is like a, a five minute thing sped up. So it's not like the greatest thing in the world. Now, once it is actually masked out, tracked to the eyeball, what's next to do is track mat the actual black solid to the footage below. And to do that, all we need to do is go to track mat, making sure that the black solid is right on top of the footage and make sure we click on alpha inverted. Now you'll notice, you'll see a background of the gray and white checkers and that is exactly what we want. Now, if I were to turn on the eyeball to the bottom footage, we'll just have the same eyeball and that's fine. So for right now, let's drag in our eyeball, which is just a ghetto version. I, I just copied, uh, screen captured, guess, uh, you know, an eyeball from the actual movie. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's going to get the job done. And then I created like a little spider pupil and illustrator real fast. Um, just because it, the eyeballs, if you watch the movie, the eyeball looks like a little spider. Um, and I didn't get a lot of good glimpse of it because obviously I watched the movie real quickly. Um, but yeah, so anyways, put the eyeball down there and then start adjusting your blending options. It's all preference from here. Um, I adjusted the preferences, you know, to get some of that window glare without having a massive shape on top of the eyeball and for here we'll drag that little spider guy with, with a little <laughs> little homemade glare drag it into position and then what we'll do from here is make sure everything's good we'll parent it to the knoll and everything should align nicely until we drag the footage further and we'll actually put another positional keyframe to make sure everything stays aligned Now, being that this was a little illustrator file, the size, the sides and the edges of this little spider pupil situation here is a little crisp. And so what we're gonna need to do is add a blur to that. And so I'm just gonna go over to window, make sure my effects and presets clicked in, or you can just hit command five. I'm gonna type in blur, and I'm just gonna use a lens blur here, drag it on top of the layer which is a little spider aka i number two all right and we're just going to drag out that radius just a little bit again play with it what you will um, the other video added a little bit of a wiggle to it as it scaled up into position so it looked like it morphed a little bit better but you know it's all fun so from here, I'm gonna change some of the blending modes just to play around, see if I can get that spider with the glare of the windows uh, as well. And I'm pretty happy with it. Again, the spider is gonna be out of position when the pupil or when the eyeball moves. And so right here, all I'm gonna do is click on the, the layer, hit P for position, create a keyframe, drag it to the right, and create another keyframe, which by dragging it will create it automatically and I'm pretty happy with the results thus far. And then I'll just change some of the blending options, experimenting, see what looks good, what doesn't. Again, all preference, play with it, experiment it. Experiment it, is that a, can you say that? Experiment with it and uh, just have some fun. You might need to change some of the transparency by hitting T, you can bring up the opacity, drag that down, do whatever you want. Again, there's a lot of different variations of this eyeball, but this is just the one I like. Now, when it's all said and done, and I'm happy with the result, I'll zoom out and it'll actually look a lot better, given that this is you know, a very quick example. It looks a lot better when it's zoomed out versus close in. But there you go. This is how you create a little bird box eyeball. And 
just rinse and repeat onto the other side and you're good to go.